Wisconsin Athletic Center has seen a lot of great high school sports here at Humblelander Stadium, all the way back to the Northeast Stadium days, and it showed a good one here tonight as we are underway in the uh, 2022 high school football playoffs. Bobby Stotzenberg along with Greg Simmons, and Greg, uh, what a treat by these kids. I, I love it to watch these high school kids get after it. The emotion on both sides of the football, the tough conditions, this this is what football and high school football is all about. You know, I can remember going back. We've done many broadcasts here on KSAT 12 in the 80s and 90s. Yeah. And this game to me tonight was right in there with them, the rivalry. And I, I just thought the performance of both teams tonight was so dramatic, so heartfelt. And as you and I pointed out earlier, also very emotional. And the man himself was here tonight, Jerry Comalander. Yeah. So that was, that was great to see. So he wanted to see some great football. He got to see just that. Well, we talked about New Braunfels and their great tradition, their second all-time in the area, and they're still tied with Smithson Valley because Smithson Valley won tonight, by the way. So both of those teams now with 48 playoff wins. But uh, this will be a memorable one in uh, New Braunfels history because they faced so much adversity to get the win, and, and Reagan put the pressure on in that second half. I always thought that the emotion helps carry high school student athletes because they ride those waves. Yeah. They're so young, so impressionable. And what Lyndon Hamilton had to say in that locker room at halftime, you could tell, inspired them in this second half. And they came back. They came back with so much enthusiasm and changed the course of the game that New Braunfels had to answer to. They had no choice. Well, I enjoy broadcasting with you. I, we got to see that that steal and uh, that steal classic over Brennan in the Pigskin Classic, and we get another classic here. Not the Pigskin Classic, but a playoff classic here tonight as New Braunfels wins it as we take a look at quickly at the uh, highlights here before we wrap it up. In the uh, first half, it was the turnovers. We talked about five turnovers in the first half. Here was the first one. It seemed like Reagan would have the momentum. I think both teams were trying to adjust to what the weather had developed, what the backups had developed that they were having to face early on. So they're going to have to use their defense to try and force uh, opportunities, if you will. And uh, here was a big interception that kept Reagan in the game because it seemed like New Braunfels was about to take off and dominate, but that big interception uh, thwarted a score. But Reagan finally turned the ball over themselves, Greg, and we talked about our player of the game, DeAndre Davis. Here was his first big play. Yeah, watching take the control of this one right here because there's the there's the handoff. You think the ball the ball stripped right there, and it never touches the ground. That was incredible. Bobbled it and was able to bring it down. And that set up a 13-yard uh, drive that just took two plays. Tyree Johnson with a nine-yard run. It was six to nothing at that point as the. Uh, the Braunfels Unicorns get the first score of the game. And then after this disaster on the punt, watch this as they get the ball in point-blank range. They could have taken the safety, but the coach uh, decided to yes. take that, the, the And take by the, the way, ball. brilliant decision yeah. Brilliant yeah. because he, he had the option to take the safety, take the ball, and he took the ball, and it resulted in this right there, the touchdown. But Reagan came storming back in the second half. They took the lead 13-12, to 12, but then the play of the game – Without a doubt, was this a two-point conversion interception by DeAndre Davis? Watch this. He steps well, that, right in. Well, and That was the play before in the first exactly. half. Excuse me. But he made that move, right, read the quarterback's eyes all the way to turn the ball over. Well, that was uh, here's the play of the game we were talking about on it. the two-point conversion. And that changed Coming the game. Back, that was the, the, the turning point of the game, if you will. And it gave the momentum back to New Braunfels, and they seized it. All right, folks, we are underway here in the uh, playoffs. We hope to bring you another contest again next Friday night. We've got some good choices already developing, Greg, but this one will be hard to top as New Braunfels wins an emotional contest here tonight, 17-13. to 13. Yeah, and congratulations again to both teams. And, again, a shout-out to both bands and both dance teams and cheerleading squads for making the trip out here, battling the weather just like their teammates did. And it's very happy to see, and we appreciate being able to bring you this here on KSAT 12. All right, we'll see you ne uh, next week, everyone. Stay tuned for the night beat. Is coming up next.
The Night Beat starts right now. New developments day by day. The case against Councilman Clayton Perry expected to include a DWI charge. We speak with an attorney who specializes in these types of cases. Something I've always found kind of interesting about this type of case is that people think politicians get special treatment. Why this attorney says the potential punishment could differ from other cases if there's a conviction and the challenges that make this case more difficult. But first, Ooh, we know that you have felt it. Yeah, a dramatic drop in temperatures tonight. Some might even describe it as weather whiplash. Yeah. All in just a few hours, the temperatures dropping into the 40s right now. They could still drop a little further. Meteorologist Adam Kasky tracking it all right now. Adam. Yeah, and really the season changed like that earlier this afternoon. We went from 82 degrees for a high temperature at about 1245 down to 47 now. The cold front just making its way to Brownsville. Brownsville still at 74 degrees. But you see the wind coming out of the north here. It's pushing that cooler air into south and central Texas. Lubbock already at 30, Amarillo 28. You go farther north up the plains and we're talking teens for temperatures right now. Currently 40s for most of us. Port SA, west side 48, 46 in Converse, Seguin 47, Bandera now at 42. Tomorrow morning, you're going to feel the chill in the air right near 40 degrees. And I do think, especially in northern Bear County and northern San Antonio, we'll make it down to 39 for the morning low temperature. 33 Comfort Kerrville wouldn't shock me if a few nooks and crannies in the hill country happen to have a very light brief freeze tomorrow morning. We're going to talk more about how long this cold air is going to last and how much rain we saw today and if it was enough to get us out of the driest year to date. We'll have it all coming right up. All right, you got to feel for the people who are outside experiencing this. The colder weather comes the same night that high school football teams take the field, but fans found ways to stay fired up as they spoke with our Alyssa Cole tonight. We're going to hear from them coming up in about 10 minutes. But also developing tonight, another charge expected against San Antonio Councilman Clayton Perry. San Antonio police confirming they will file a DWI case against the councilman. So that's on top of the charge of failing to stop and provide information in Sunday's crash. The night team's Patty Santos spoke with a DWI attorney who says that bringing a DWI charge without a field sobriety test or even a breathalyzer is pretty uncommon. I can probably think of a handful of cases over decades where I've seen somebody charged after the fact. Attorney in Ernest Acevedo III you know, has been representing yeah. DWI cases for nearly three decades. And if there's no scientific evidence and there's no field sobriety test even offered, it's going to be hard to prove that a person's intoxicated. But it's not impossible. If it's done um, in a way where the video confirms that, a jury could find him guilty based on a video of him being intoxicated on Sunday, San Antonio police responded to this hit and run crash at Jones, Maltzberger and Redland Road. A witness followed the driver and led officers to District 10 Councilman Clayton Perry's home. The officer's body camera shows Perry lying in his backyard. A police report described Perry smelled of alcohol. But you were out driving? Perry evaded incriminating answers. No, I'm not. No, not right now, but you were out earlier. The officer left without making an arrest. If people are home, they don't get arrested for DWI. That's not uncommon because it's hard to get the proof that a person was driving while intoxicated um, once they're in their house. As to whether or not the officer had the legal right to perform a sobriety test or breathalyzer test, Acevedo says those are the types of situations DWI attorneys challenge later in court. Acevedo says the first DWI conviction in Bear County usually results in jail or probation. He says a license suspension is unlikely since a breathalyzer test was never offered or refused. But he believes Perry's public status will work against him. If you make it on the news, that generally makes your case much more difficult to fight than if nobody knows your case is pending. Police say they have surveillance video of Perry at this Bill Miller's on Thousand Oaks Drive where he had an encounter with staff. Witnesses called police to report a suspected drunk driver that matched the description of Perry. Patty Santos, KSAT 12 News. Hey, Councilman Clayton Perry's political future is very much in doubt. On Monday, San Antonio City Council expected to call for Perry's resignation. They're also expected to take up a vote of no confidence against him. It would be the second one against one of its council members in less than a week. 
That special meeting is scheduled for Monday afternoon. Our coverage continues online and on air online at KSAT.com. There you can actually take a look at the timeline of events that led up to the situation that Councilman Clayton Perry currently finds himself in tonight. Now for a look at some of today's big headlines in your night beat news flash. A new Braunfels High School quarterback shocked by a utility pole. That's according to the new Braunfels Herald Zeitung. Now, uh, police told KSAT they treated a 17 year old last night. They said the teen had electrical burns and broken bones after falling 20 to 30 feet off of a utility pole. Police say the teen also hit a power line and was taken to a hospital right here in San Antonio. But at this point, it's unclear why the teen climbed up that pole. An off-duty Border Patrol agent confronts four suspected burglars overnight. San Antonio police say the off-duty agent shot at one of the suspects after they pulled out a gun. Happened around 2 this morning at an apartment complex near Ingram and Highway 151. Officers say the suspects were trying to break into cars. Investigators say the man who was shot died. San Antonio police and federal agents are involved in this investigation. And Military City USA honoring those who serve our country, retired and active military members gathered at Fort Sam Houston Cemetery for a Veterans Day ceremony. Now tomorrow, the city is going to host a Veterans Parade downtown, and this is the first after a two year hiatus because of the pandemic, of course. The parade starts at noon tomorrow near 4th Street and Alamo Street, and it's going to end at San Saba Street. And that's a look at your Nightbeat News Flash. All the rain has come to an end outside, but the wind has picked up, still gusting close to 30 miles per hour behind the cold front, and that's just pushing in that colder air from the north. We'll talk about a potential light freeze for some folks in just a bit and how long this cold air is going to stick around and another chance of rain just around the corner. All right, the cold front, though, didn't keep fans from the high school football stands, but they did make adjustments to stay warm. Plus... A suspect runs from police and dashes into a daycare. The takedown caught on camera. Next on the Night Beat. He never field. saw that. He just saw him on the field. Because the guy just took the snap. And he goes, and I went, mm, that's number 16. Yeah, I was like, 14. this looks right that's kid. Okay. Well, he got it the next time. Nicholas Dusikowski. What the work. hell? Is he a Reagan kid? Smithson Valley. Oh. Yeah. A suspect dashes into a daycare to try and escape police in Ohio. Officers say the 39 year old refused to pull over, crashed before running into the daycare behind an employee. A taser was used but missed. That's when the suspect ends up jumping into a playpen with children. Now, warning, some of you might find the video you're about to see disturbing. Oh my God. Oh my God. Get the kids, please get the kids. The children pulled to safety, obviously shaken up. The suspect tackled, then led out of the business less than two minutes after he entered. Police had the suspect facing a long list of charges tonight, including assault. Now back here at home, usually you see football players huddled up on the field, but tonight we saw some of that in the football stands after a cold front blew through. Now fans told the night team's Alyssa Cole that they came prepared. It may be below 50 degrees outside, but football fans are fired up at the Alamo Stadium in San Antonio. Look at the Lions! Lions. All right. Woo! Come on, one by one, the fans are pouring in with warm gear on hand. How do you plan to stay warm tonight? With this blanket here, <laughs> it's cold. Hand warmers, did you bring them? Hand warmers. Blankets, everything. Warmers, blankets, beanies. What are you all using tonight to keep warm? Hoodies and blankets. Big blankets, yep. Yep. And my brother do it and my daddy do. Yes. Yeah, the wind and cold weather, that's not stopping these football fans. It's school spirit that's keeping them warm. Let's go. And fans also tell me supporting their friends and family is worth bearing through the cold. I'm a senior at Burbank, and this might be, might not be our last game. So, you know, you got to be supportive. Hey, no matter what, if it's cold or not, you know, I'm still, I'm still going to be out here staying warm, you know, with my letterman and everything I got. I gotta support my boyfriend. A little cold weather isn't gonna stop you, huh? Mm -mm. <laughs> While the fans are bundled up in the stands, 
They're enjoying every bit of the game together. <laughs> Alyssa Cole, KSAT 12 News. That's right. how you stay warm right there. That. You just keep moving. It's true. It just does keep help. Moving. It does help. In honor of Veterans Day, our live cam at the Korean War Memorial is just across the street from the Tobin Center in Veterans Plaza. A reminder, tomorrow the city will hold a Veterans Parade downtown at noon. We have all the details right now on KSAT.com. And if you are a veteran, thank, thank you. you. Thank you for your service. Yeah. Chilly outside, those temperatures falling quickly and get ready for this cold air to stick around. Take a look at the trend for our morning temperatures tomorrow morning at 39 degrees Sunday. Even cooler 36. This is for San Antonio. OK, this is around town and I do think we will have a light freeze in a good portion of the hill country by Sunday morning. Some locations possibly tomorrow morning, but Sunday morning, I think it's uh, more of a sure bet for a good chunk of the hill country and into next week. I mean, the warmest morning we'll have is 46 degrees on Monday. Let's take a look at this map again. Ooh, look at those temperatures that are sub freezing up in the panhandle that colder air it's getting pushed southward and that cold front is just about to move through Brownsville at this time 51 Pleasanton 41 Kerrville Fredericksburg 39 Rock Springs and Junction here's what we're expecting tomorrow Fredericksburg 31 Junction 30 degrees this is at 7 a.m. tomorrow Rock Springs Kerrville pretty close at 33 Meanwhile, you get around San Antonio and Timberwood Park 37, Holotus 39 on the south side, Elmendorf and even Lavernia at 41 degrees for the morning temperature. Then by the afternoon, right near 60, give or take a few Timberwood Park 59, you get to Von Army 62 degrees and Bernie 57 afternoons aren't going to warm up very much. Do not expect a warming trend on the backside of this cold front. This is the first real deal cold front that actually maintains the cool air as well. Monday we get up to 63 for the high. That's the warmest day we'll have for the next seven days, and that's still 10 degrees below average for this time of year. All right, I was very hopeful that we could squeeze out just enough rain over the airport, over the official climate site rain gauge to bump us out of the driest year to date. We only had two hundredths of an inch, so unfortunately we didn't do it. All we need are three hundredths of an inch and we'll be in second place. 1917, we're just shy. So 2022, still the driest year to date on record here in San Antonio officially. OK, here's a look at some of the rainfall totals. You see, of course, as usual, little pockets where we didn't have any rainfall. But where you see the green, that typically indicates an inch or more. And around the north side of town is where we really had most of the rain today, about a quarter of an inch in some spots. One little bullseye here east of Bandera Road, just inside of 1604, six tenths of an inch. 60 degrees tomorrow afternoon, still a bit breezy. North wind at 10 to 20 Sunday morning. Again, a light freeze in the hill country is likely, but around town will be about 36 degrees. Sunday afternoon, very similar right near 60. Monday's our next shot at rain, and it's really our only chance over the next week and right now it's at 40% and I do think odds are starting to favor some locations east of I-35, but we'll keep you updated as we get new info. All right, Adam, thank you. All right, I'm beginning to think it's something about high school football on KSAT 12. Maybe. It brings out the best games and tonight did not disappoint. Let's go to our Greg Simmons at Comalander. What a game tonight, Greg. You know, I said after the KSAT Pigskin Classic, hey, guys, this is never going to happen again. We're never going to get great games like this. And here we broadcast another great game. This was spectacular. Reagan against the Brothels. When we come back, in case you miss a game, live on KSAT 12. we got all the highlights for you. And also we come back, the Spurs taking on Milwaukee. and you're watching the best of big game coverage playoff edition. Strike -off! Strike -off! Yes, you are. Good evening, everybody. Welcome live to Coma Lander Stadium for the big game and our big game playoff coverage tonight. Number six, Reagan taking on New Braffles, and what a game we had. Let's get right to the highlights. We pick it up in the second quarter for you. Unicorns inside the Reagan 10-yard line. They hand it to Tyree Johnson. Follows his blockers on his way for the nine-yard touchdown. Six-nothing Unicorns after a missed extra point. 12-nothing New Braffles at halftime. Third quarter, Reagan only down five when Josiah Ross Garcia powers his way forward. Gets a good push into the end zone for the Reagan 
And look at that. Take the lead by one, 13 to 12. They go for two, and it's intercepted at the one by DeAndre Davis. And he's taking it back 99 yards for the Bravos, 14 13 unicorns. And they hold on for the win, 17 13. More now from our David Sears. All right, Greg, with Clayton Lampkin, the starting quarterback for New Braunfels, stepped in today. Tough position to be in with your friend getting hurt. Yeah. What was it like to, to lead this team to victory tonight? Oh, absolutely. It was, it was awesome. I couldn't have done this without the encouragement of my teammates and just how hard we all played tonight on both sides of the ball, and I couldn't have done without them. Win didn't seem to be a factor for you guys. A lot of people thought because you passed so much, it might be a factor, but you guys seem to control everything from offense, defense, and the, and the weather. Oh, man, it was, it was awesome. I mean, our, our o line was – our line was doing great all game. They were pushing and they were making great holes for our running backs, and we were just able to work off of it. Unicorns moving on. Congratulations. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, Greg, back to you. All right, thank you, David. Over at Gustafson Stadium, number two, Brennan taking on Laredo Alexander in the Class 6A Division I by district ground. Bears leading 30 to nothing in his second quarter. Looking for more. Handoff goes to Jason Love. Walks in for the three-yard TD. Bears lead 37 nothing. Final from Gus, 58 to 7. Brennan, Smithson Valley, the Rangers hosting the center. Cedar Park Timberwolves in the first round of the 5A Division I playoffs. Rangers leading 6 0 in the second when their defense makes a big stop. The pass is going to get batted at the line. Nicholas Dusokowski comes up with the interception. He's going to take it back to the Timberwolves territory. They cap off the drive with a 23-yard field goal from Clayton Amaya to take a 9-0 lead. The final from Ranger Stadium. Swiss Valley wins it 30-7. New Braunfels Canyon Cougars hosting Georgetown Eagles 5A Division I playoffs. Two minutes left in the first half. Game tied at 7. Georgetown on the Canyon 5-yard line. Line up in the Wildcat. Andrew Petter takes the snap. Goes straight through the Cougars defense for the score. 14-7 to the half. Let's go to the big game coverage scoreboard for that final. Canyon falls to Georgetown 21-10. Brennan with a win over Laredo Alexander. Smith Valley advances and so does New Braunfels over Reagan. Number four, Alamo Heights taking on Curvo Tive at Orem Stadium. 5A Division II first round. The win not stopping the Beals from going to the air. Quarterback Conley McKenna throwing to the near sideline to Rhett Anderson hitting him in stride. He's taking it in for the touchdown. 34-yard scores. Make it 7-0 Alamo Heights final for Orem. Mules win it 64-27. Burbank, Burbank fans all bundled up at Alamo Stadium for tonight's game against Lockhart Lions. Lions were to a 21-0 lead in the second. And they are out for more. Lions in midfield. Quarterback Ashton Dickens keeping it on the option read. He makes the right decision and he bursts through the line into the secondary. Foot race of the end zone. No one's going to touch him. 52 yards of the house. 28-0 Lockhart. They win it 62-7. Ferris Stadium. Class 6A Division 2 by district battle between number 8 Brandeis and San Marcos. Broncos get on the board first. Handoff goes to Joseph Coleman. He Races in for the six-yard touchdown and his quick 6 nothing lead. Final from Ferris. Brandeis wins it 27-14 over at Rutledge Stadium. Harlandale taking on veterans from Moria in the Class 5A Division II by district ground. Patriots up big in the fourth quarter. Quarterback Jason Contu keeps it himself to pick up nine yards and second along. The drive stalls, but Aiden Campos comes on to kick a 30 yard field goal that makes it 38 to 7 veterans memorial set at the big game coverage scoreboard for that final it is veterans memorial over harlandale 38 7 brandeis is advancing over sam marcus alamo heights downs curve otiving lockhart over burbank davenport wolves making the trip to fredericksburg for their first round matchup against the battling billies the wolves take the first bite on the billies 20 yard line the handoff goes to shaston golden he finds the whole stiff arms of the defender to break free turns on the jets he's gone 80 yards of the house seven nothing davenport final from fredericksburg Davenport wins it 36 to 6. In the warm confines of the Alamo Dome, Lynn passes in Somerset. Face off in the 4A Division I first round. Bulldogs down 17 6 late in the second quarter when they bite back. Cobe Isbell takes a snap, fires down the field sideline. Jason Rodriguez with a great catch for the 42 yard touchdown. Kept the land passes lead to five. Bulldogs get the ball back after a turnover. Isbell powers his way on the quarterback keeper. Somerset takes the lead 20 to 17. The final from the Dome. Somerset wins it 27 17. First round of three Division One playoffs. Hondo Owls facing Randolph Rohawks. First quarter, the Owls quarterback DJ Richter keeps it on the design run, powers his way in the three yards out for a 7 0 lead. The Rohawks respond. Running back Colton Howard takes a handoff, races to the corner of the end zone to tie the game of seven. Back to the big game coverage scoreboard for that final. Randolph over Hondo 28 9. Canyon Lake advances in a shutout. Davenport over Fredericksburg 36-6 and Somerset outlast Lamp passes 27-17. In Seguin, the Comfort Bobcats facing off against the Taft Greyhounds in 3A Division II playoffs. Greyhounds are off to the race as the pitch goes to Joshua Suarez. Turns the quarter on the far sideline. Turns upfield. Outraces everyone. 29-yard score. 24-0 Taft. Back to the big game coverage scoreboard for that final. Comfort falls to Taft 38-14. It's Liberty Hill over Highlands 63-17. Taft 
That's San Antonio Taft, 49 to 14 over Laredo United, and Warren over Eagle Pass, 47 to 28. We are just getting started with the first week of our big game playoff coverage. Up next, our big game coverage road trip, fan cam, and more highlights and more scores. But first, let's listen to the Sabanel Yellow Jackets marching band. Our big game coverage road trip as Larry and photographer Billy Caldera headed south with stops at South Side and Southwest. That's where we find our Larry Ramirez now live down Dragon Lane looking for a little heat. Hi, Larry. Hello, Greg. You know what? Hot chocolate was a very popular concession stand item tonight because, as you know, it is cold out. I saw people buying four or five at a time. So let's kick off at Southside High School where the Cardinals were looking to make history tonight. Southside Cardinals hosting a Class 5A by district first round playoff game facing the Victoria East Titans. First offensive play of the game. Handoff goes to Titans running back Jacarian Giles. He gets down the visiting sideline and he's off to the races for a 70 yard touchdown run. Point after is good and the Titans lead 7 0 just like that. Southside responds behind running back Matthew Castaneda. Late first quarter, he scores from six yards out his second touchdown in the quarter and Southside goes up 23 7. Up next. Next, right here, the Southside Southwest Dragons hosting the Victoria West Warriors in another 5A D1 by district matchup. Third quarter, Dragons are down 14 0 when Brain Lazama scores from one yard away, and the Dragons trailed 14 7. Later in the third, Warriors QB Camden Reppert throws it right to Dragons DB Angel Quintero, and he goes back for a 20 yard pick six for Southwest. Perfect read by that young man. Point afterwards blocked, though, and the Dragons are down 1 13 14. Let's go to the scoreboard now for those finals and check it out. Southside wins. Wins by one, 37-36, and right here, Victoria West gets the dub, 21-16. Congratulations to Southside. They are now 10-1 on the season, their first 10-win uh, in football program history there. But more importantly, they're still alive in the playoffs. Greg, back to you. All right, thanks a lot, Larry, and get inside quickly now. All right, time now for Fan Cam, where you, our fans, help us cover one of the big games in our big game playoff coverage. Here's our Andrew Seeley. <laughs> A torrential downpour and gale force winds aren't enough to stop the Poth cheerleaders tonight. Pirates taking on George West in the bye district round. And the weather isn't enough to stop the Poth offense either. First quarter, quarterback Zane Robbie keeps it himself right up the middle, cuts to the far sideline, and he is gone for a 30-yard touchdown. Extra point was good for a 7-0 lead. After a George West three and out, they strike again. This time, Robbie fakes the handoff and knifes his way to the end zone for the 14-yard score as the Pirates storm out to a 14-0 advantage. That is the score as Van Cam departs midway through the first quarter, both leading 14 to nothing. From Jordanton, Andrew Seeley, KSAT 12 Sports. Well, they scored a few more times, Andrew. How about 64 to nothing, both over George West. College Station ends Wagner season, 37-19. A&M Consolidated does the same to Seguin, 35-20. And Pleasanton over Toloso Midway at down in Corpus Christi, 42-20. The Spurs debut their new Fiesta City edition uniforms against the Milwaukee Bucks. Here without Giannis Antetokounmpo and Drew Holiday. Second quarter action. Keldon Johnson stops. Pops the three to put the Spurs up by seven. They lead 54-46 of the half. Third quarter, the Spurs on the run. Trey Jones finds Doug McDermott on the wing for the three. Spurs up by 21. Keldon, by the way, led San Antonio with 29. And the Spurs snap out of their five-game skid, 111-93. Up next, guess what? It's a road trip to the Golden State Warriors. Monday night at 9 o'clock. How about that coverage tonight? How about that Reagan New Braunfels game? And how about a salute to all the fans and people that showed up in all this cold, chilly, windy weather? Live from Comalander Stadium, Greg Simmons, KSAT 12 Sports. Job well done. Thank you, Greg. Yes, thank you. And we'll be right back after this.